Ladies and gentlemen, Behind the Line proudly presents to you another exciting rendition of The Woke, Turning on the Woke. This episode is brought to you by Don Staley. Are you struggling to excel based on merit? Are you struggling to succeed based on your value? Do you find yourself in a situation where you need to exploit your marginalized status to get ahead? If so, the professional victims at Staley and Staley can help your cause. Give them a call at 801-VICTIM. Just when I'm on the verge of giving women's college basketball a chance, I've had several of you guys reach out to me this week telling me to give them one more chance. And I was willing to listen. I was right there, right there. Then Dawn Staley gives me a fresh reminder of why I don't watch women's basketball. I had planned on watching the game last night between Iowa and South Carolina in the Final Four. Unfortunately, I have been so busy setting up new sponsors, meeting with my accountant, cranking out videos, soccer games, and getting prepped for my upcoming vacation that I wasn't able to watch the game last night. But credit to the young ladies from both teams. Judging by the box score and the highlights I saw this morning, looked to be a competitive, entertaining game. But this is not about the players. This is about the face of women's college basketball, Don Staley. When you're a star-driven league, or in this case, a star-driven sport, one of the most important aspects is public perception of your star. For the past 20 years, LeBron James has been the face of the NBA. When public perception of LeBron James was positive, NBA ratings were up. Now, you can still have a negative public perception and use that to your advantage. When LeBron James made the decision on ESPN, which turned him into the biggest villain in the NBA, ratings were the highest they'd been since the late 90s. Like I've explained before, there's a huge difference in good heat and go-away heat. The decision was an example of good heat. Casual NBA fans tuned in, hoping to see LeBron James lose. Now, when he was baptized and born again, when LeBron James became a professional victim, pushing BLM and accusing a large portion of the NBA audience of mythical racism, millions of casual NBA fans quit watching the league. Make no mistake about it, Don Staley is the face of women's college basketball. Sure, Caitlin Clark is a big star right now, but she's gone after this season. Dawn Staley is the constant. She's there every year. The face of the league drives public perception of your sport. For the most part, Dawn Staley has had a friendly relationship with the mainstream media. Plentiful woke hugs, cucumber picnic lunches under the woke oak tree, worshiping the rainbow, giving our gratitude to the exploitation of mythical misogyny that gave us our success. Now, obviously, Dawn Staley has enjoyed a nice relationship with the mainstream media. They never criticize her. They never call her on her bullshit. It's real easy to get along with the media when they do nothing but praise you. Real easy to get along with the media when they're pretending like you're the greatest coach in basketball. But what happens when there is a hint of criticism? What happens when the media starts questioning your style of play, your coaching style? What happens when the rainbow fades away and the cloud of real journalism makes a rare appearance? Last night, We found out exactly what happens. We've seen this movie before. It's another example of the woke turning on the woke. Throughout the season, Dawn Staley's Gamecocks, which when you think about it, that's an interesting name for a women's team. You would think a name like that would be reserved for a team in the WNBA dump, but I digress. Throughout the season, South Carolina has been criticized for their physical style of play. Back in February, UConn head coach Gino Ariyama called them out for beating the hell out of his star player. He said she had bruises all over her body after the game. Look, basketball is a physical sport. Some teams are more physical than others. You have finesse teams, you have physical teams. In some cases, coaches will push their teams to be more physical when they tend to struggle offensively. Last night in the Final Four, the Cox lost a hard-fought game to the Iowa Katy Roos. Apparently, there was some behind-the-scenes chatter in media circles before the game about the physicality of South Carolina. Perhaps some in the media were questioning if their style of play was dirty. I mean, that's what Gino Ariyama insinuated with his comments back in February. He said the hard style of play from the Cox was not basketball. 
In the post-game presser last night, someone in the media asked Dawn Staley about the perception of her team being bullies. Now, just to be clear, this dude did not mention the behind-the-scenes whispers in media circles. He made it a point to ask Dawn Staley about what other coaches, other colleagues were saying about her team. Dawn Staley proceeded to pull out her woke Bible. She needed some guidance. Oh, father or mother or gender unconfirmed deity, please guide me in answering this question. Impart your great wisdom on me. Show me the way. How do I twist this question into an indictment of mythical racism against the media while also victimizing myself and my players? It was quite the performance from Dawn Staley. She is a professional at being the victim. Watch for yourself. The truth about our team, okay? It's a good question, okay? Um, we're not bar fighters. We're not thugs. We're not monkeys. We're not street fighters. Some of the people in the media, when you're gathering in public, you're saying things about our team and you're being heard, and it's being brought back to me, okay? And these are the people that write nationally for our, for our sport. So you can, you can not like our team, okay? You can not like me, um, but when you say things that you probably should be saying um, in your home, on the phone, or texting, out in public, and you're being heard, and you are a national writer for our sport, it just confirms, just confirms what, what we already know. So watch what you say when you're in public and you're talking about my team in particular. So don't judge us by the color of our skin. Let me get this out of the way first. I have no problem with Dawn Staley defending her players. I would actually admire the fact that she's coming to their defense. I respect it. But here's the thing. What is she defending them from? Where is the attacker? Who is the attacker? She starts her defense by saying, We are not bar fighters. We are not thugs. We are not street fighters. I looked this morning, I tried to find one example of an opposing coach or someone in the media labeling South Carolina with any of those labels. I couldn't find one example of it. Yes, Iowa coach Lisa Bluber, Lisa Blubber, who the hell knows how to pronounce her last name, Iowa head coach. She said someone else told her that rebounding against South Carolina is like going to a bar fight. Now that's not the coach saying it. She's just relaying information that she was given. And look, that does not mean what Don Staley is saying here is not true. It's entirely possible all this happened behind the scenes. But seriously, if an opposing coach or media member called the women of South Carolina thugs and someone in the woke media heard about it, it would be headline news throughout the media. ESPN would do a 30 for 30 on the emotional trauma Dawn Staley and her players were forced to endure. ESPN, they would hold a town hall organizing events with Dawn Staley to combat mythical racism. It's not like it takes all that much for the media to exploit this issue. Remember last fall, Rachel Richardson and her fairy godmother invented a story of mythical racism out of thin air? It was headline news for weeks until it was confirmed to be false. All of a sudden, it mysteriously disappeared along with Rachel Richardson. Let me tell you what's really going on here. First off, did you notice the condescending tone from Don Staley? This was not a press conference. This was a lecture. This was a warning. The message to the media being, do not say things about my team that I don't like. From what I can tell, there was one member of the national media that was criticizing Dawn Staley behind the scenes. Now, we don't know what was said. Hell, at this point, this entire situation could be fabricated, a fairy tale from the mind of Dawn Staley. But this is nothing but hearsay. It's conjecture. And Dawn Staley is using it to paint herself and her team as the victim after they lost in the Final Four. Let me throw this out there, too. This is something I thought about while watching this press conference this morning. Number one, do you think Don Staley says all of this if South Carolina had won that game? Number two, I wonder if all this bitterness, all this victimizing stems from the fact that South Carolina, Don Staley's team, 
lost to an Iowa team consisting mostly of players who lack melanin, led by a coach who also lacks melanin. I never look at things like this from that perspective, but when dealing with someone who exploits race every chance she gets, just hard not to wonder if Don Staley is bitter because of that. Just a thought, just throwing it out there. Don Staley also accused the media of mythical racism. Don't judge my team on the color of our skin. Um, who in the hell's doing that? Someone please give me one example of the young women of South Carolina being judged based on the color of their skin. Back in the late 80s, early 90s, the Detroit Pistons were the toughest team in the NBA. They beat the hell out of their opponents. While I was watching The Last Dance, you know how many times I heard Isaiah Thomas complain about mythical racism? None. Draymond Green is a nuisance. Draymond Green is an agitator. He's constantly criticized for his style of play. I can't stand Draymond Green, but I'll give him credit. When he is criticized for his playing style, he doesn't play the victim. He doesn't make it about race. Don Staley said, the reason I'm calling out this mythical racism is because it's forming a dangerous narrative about my team. Let me ask you something. How many of you knew about this narrative before that post-game press conference last night? If I had to guess, none of you. You want to know why? Because it wasn't public knowledge. This entire rant from Don Staley is based off of hearsay and conjecture. She was told by someone who was told by someone else who was told by someone else who overheard someone in the national media supposedly talking negatively about South Carolina. If you're not looking to exploit your role as the victim, you know what most coaches would do with this information? Forget about it. But that's not Don Staley's role. She is constantly exploiting situations like this to make herself the victim. Don Staley is one hell of a basketball coach. She should be celebrated for building a dynasty in South Carolina. She should be credited with growing women's college basketball. Whether she wins or loses, Don Staley always gives credit to God for her success. I don't think Don Staley is a bad woman, a bad person. I don't think she's evil. I don't put her in the same category as Joy Reid or someone like Keith Olbermann. But when I think of the legacy of Don Staley, it's built on the foundation of mythical racism and victimhood. That should not be the case, but it's impossible not to draw those parallels when Don Staley is constantly drawing the parallels herself. But give me your thoughts. Don Staley lectures the media after losing to Iowa in the Final Four. It's a weird one because on one hand, I respect and admire her willingness to defend her players. On the other hand, I'm wondering what the hell she's defending them from. You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.